Hello, goodness. Hi, how are y'all? Oh my goodness, it has certainly been a while. Um, I'm gonna take like an educated guess. I'm gonna say, um, like two weeks, three weeks. Um, it's been a while. Um, to start off a bit of an update, um, sometime around when I had posted my last video, I got very sick. I honestly don't know why. Um, it, it was literally like the day, the day of Thanksgiving. Luckily, like it was a holiday. I had the holiday off of work, but I was literally so fatigued and tired that I literally slept through most of the day of Thanksgiving and I literally got up to like eat and that was it. Like I slept through most of the day, like I ate and then I just like went straight to bed. <laughs> that was a very fun experience. I ended up actually calling out of work like the day after because like I was so out of it and like so sick and tired and my like throat was hurting and ugh, it was just, it was rough. <laughs> Um, but it took about, like, a few days after that, I think, like, almost a week for me to, like, feel better. I went into work on Monday. I still wasn't really feeling it, but, you know, like, I had to work. Um, but I didn't really feel all right, like, getting in front of, like, my laptop to, like, record, and I had, like, a scratchy throat. I think I was also kind of experiencing like minor art block around that time too. I think it was just because I was so like fatigued and tired by the time I came home. I would like take care of grandma and then just sleep. The speed paint in the background is an interesting one and it does relate to this video. I thought, you know, since I have, you know, like a speed paint like of me drawing a cat, how about I tell y'all an experience on how I sort of adopted a stray kitten. They're, they're technically still a stray, but I kinda adopted them, kinda. So for context, a little bit of background information. I'm very much an animal lover. Um, I grew up watching like a bunch of animal documentaries, um, Untamed and Not Cut, um, Animal Battles, stuff like that. Um, I was very much an animal lover, like I always was and I always am. Feels like that side of me hasn't really gone away to be honest but but yeah I was always an animal lover my dad and I and my family we mainly grew up with like pit bulls in particular specifically blue pit bulls we owned a blue pit bull named Smokey and then after that we had owned a blue pit bull named Akila who had a litter of she had a litter of 12. She had a litter of 12 puppies. And we kept one of them, and then she was named Velvet. And Velvet ended up having a litter with puppies too. She had a litter of five. Never grew up with cats. Never grew up with cats. Until, I want to say like 2016, 2017. Um... This is also, like, another thing for context is in, the, in like, the area that I live in, there's, like, a bunch of stray cats, like, roaming around. They all belong to, like, the next-door neighbor, but they're all, like, outdoor cats. Um, so, like, it wasn't uncommon to see just, like, a stray cat just, like, running around the neighborhood. What was very uncommon was, like, younger kittens, like, baby kittens, like, walking around on their own. That was very uncommon. And that wasn't something that I figured out until about 2016, 2017. This was when I was a wee lad in high school and I had started doing community service hours. I wouldn't exactly feel comfortable specifying where, but this was also when my sister got her first job and she didn't own like a car at the time. And my grandma and I, this was when, like, we were the ones who were kind of, like, picking her up. I was helping my grandma drive for, like, a little bit. I wasn't driving. She was the one driving. It was just her eyesight. But 
we go out of the house one day. It's like the evening, like 8.39-ish, 9.30-ish, I'm going to say. We walk out of the house, and it's like pitch black at this point. And we go down like all the way to the bottom of the stairs, and we hear like meowing, like a kitten meowing in this bush that's like right in front of my next door neighbor's house. And then um, it was very unusual, very unusual to especially hear like a kitten by themselves, like no mom, no other like siblings or anything like that. And, you know, like at that time, this probably wasn't like the smartest idea, but, you know, it was like nighttime and my grandma didn't have the best eyesight, so she couldn't really go out to get my sister by herself. So, and my grandma also, she like hated cats at the time. She hated cats with every fiber in her being, let me tell you. <laughs> um, she, like, was not a fan of cats at all. She, like, absolutely hated cats. Hated the idea of having a cat. Even the thought of cats just, ugh, like, in her blood. Every fiber in her blood, in her being. Every calcium particle in her bones <laughs> hated cats. Um, but, um... I ended up going, okay, if we hear the meowing by the time that we come back, then we can, like, look into it. My grandma and I go, we pick up my sister, we come back, and we still hear the meowing coming from this bush. And I'm just like, okay, let me take a look. So I grab my phone, I grab my flashlight, and I slowly walk over to it, and then the cat just runs out. I see, like, this tiny little shadow, like, run out of there. And it's like, I knew it was a kitten. I've definitely heard what kitten meows sound like. And I figured that, oh no, like that was the last time that I saw them. And I couldn't exactly knock on my neighbor's door at like 10 o'clock at night, especially on a weekday. <laughs> um, like no way. So my family and I just called it for the night. And then the next day rolls around and I go out into my backyard because, you know, I like to take some time, you know, sit in my backyard and just kind of, you know, relax, take in the breeze, clean up the backyard a bit. And then that was when I had heard shuffling in this like old hangout area. It was like this old storage space. And then I heard like, these boxes that were like shuffling so I like walk over to that spot there was in particular this bright pink box with like holes all around it and I like move it and then I see this little gray kitten like hop on the washer he like looks right at me and like bolts right past me he runs right past me and like runs under my house and and this was very much like a new situation for me. And I remember there was like a point where I just like walked over to like this hole that he ran under. Like the hole that he ran under. I was just like sitting there just contemplating on like what to do next. Like I couldn't tell my grandma she would try to get rid of the cat. She wouldn't let me near it. Or she would try to not let me go near it because apparently, oh, cats carry diseases, blah, blah, blah. And understandable, cats can, of course, carry fleas and such. Um, but I didn't, I didn't care. I didn't care. And I don't know why my first thought wasn't, like, to call my dad or something. But I obviously knew, like, this was a kitten and he had needed help. So from there, my grandma made um, rice and steak for lunch or dinner. And I got a bowl for myself and I went out there, I pulled up a seat and I started eating. And every now and then I would throw little pieces of steak into this hole that was like on the side of my house. And the way that the hole was built or the way that it was dug, um, yeah, you couldn't really see around and you couldn't really see inside unless you were looking like straight ahead. And 
I throw little pieces of steak in there and then I put a little piece like right outside the hole that he had crawled into. And then I remember I just kind of sat there and like waited for a little bit. And then I like waited and then I waited and waited. And then I see a baby cat's little head poke out and then he grabs a little piece of steak and then hides his little head back in and then i took it another step forward and then i like held the piece in my hand and i like held it up like right by the hole and like i waited and and this was when i had captured this video for the first time and this was when i was actually able to get like a good look at his face and I saw that like his eye was just like extremely messed up like I had no idea what had happened to him before I found him and yeah I don't know if like an animal got to him or if maybe something happened like before he was born or something like I don't know like I had no idea I still don't know to this day um but you know like ever since that day you know, feeding him and, like, being beside him, it became a part of my routine. Um, every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I would grab my chair and sit out there with him, even though he was just meowing the whole time, even though he didn't even come out, I still waited, and waited, and waited, and waited, and, and then he started to get used to my presence. Every time I would, um, call or say, like, hello, he would like meow back almost as if he recognized my voice. I would eat with him. I would of course throw little pieces of like turkey or meat or steak or wet food. And um, this that went on for like a couple of days. And then it wasn't until this one day my grandma made rocon picadillo. So I go out there and then I put some picadillo in like a little napkin and I like lay it outside and then I sit in my chair and I'm eating and then I see him like jump out of the hole completely and that was when I was really able to get a look at him and luckily he started eating but as I saw him like I knew like like there was something like very bad that was wrong he was like severely he was very malnourished, he was very skinny, very small. Um, I have like photos as well. I think I was like a five, um, I think I was like a size six or seven. I think at the time I was like a size six in like feet size. And like his whole body was like that size and he was like so skinny I could see like his bones coming out through his skin and you know like as I was eating and as he was eating like with me um I of course kept his food at a distance he, there were times where he would like turn and look at me and then like go back into eating almost as if like it was like a test or something and then and then I just like went for it and that was when I caught this, and this was when I had actually pet him for the first time. And I think like that right there, that was when like a switch went off. We became very acquainted with one another, I'll say. But he literally became like a part of my routine. He became someone who, or something that I was like very acquainted with. You know, especially considering the fact that he lived under my house. <laughs> Um, that sounds very bad out of context. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, like, he became, like, one of my best friends. He became, like, a part of my routine. Ever since that day, I would literally eat outside with him. When I would go outside, he would greet me. He would meow at me, and, like, he would let me, like, clean his eye, which I thought was very surprising. Um... He had let me pet him. He had even let me pet the little white spot that's on his belly, which is so cute. And, and yeah, it, 
ever since then, it became a part of my routine to get um, cat food, cat treats, flea medicine, um, cat toys. And it's exactly what I said before. He very much became my best friend. And, and yeah, it just kind of, it grew from there. I tried to introduce like a few of my family to him. Yeah, he was very skittish at first. Um, <laughs> wasn't a fan at all. But you know, as soon as it was like me and him, then he was like very open to conversation. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I did the transition from wet food to dry food as he got older. And I remember, oh my goodness, I remember there was a time where I thought he had worms. Um, but he was actually fine. He was very fine. He was all fine. Um, and yeah, he got older and, you know, it, it's like a little unfortunate because I actually wasn't allowed to officially keep him because like my grandma did not allow cats in the house. But I still considered him mine because, you know, like he lived under my house, like I fed him, you know, like cleaned him and... And yeah, but a better thought that I like thinking on is if it, if I ended up keeping him, then I wouldn't have been able to adopt the cat that I have now. And her name is Snooky. And she was the one who, um, who came in for a surprise attack while I was recording. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, he started getting older, and, you know, cats, when they get older, they get curious, and he started to roam around the neighborhood. He's still exploring. If y'all are wondering how he is now, here are some recent photos of him. He still comes by my porch every time I call him. Surprisingly, I never ended up giving him, a, like, a name, like an official name, so I just call him Baby. <laughs> That's literally the only name that I've called him by, and that's literally, like, the only name that he responds to. And, and yeah, he's doing, like, very well. His eye, surprisingly, is a lot better. I think that's about it. And in March of 2021, um, a friend of my sister's was giving away some cats for free, and that was how we had adopted my, my youngest daughter Snooky and she is a cutie she likes to snuggle with me and she is also a Russian blue kitten just like my baby but yeah I actually think that's it I say that's it and then I'm and then I'm like oh I have something else to say um my grandma when we first got Snooky like she absolutely like hated her hated her um but as Snooky has come around as Snooki came around, so did she, and she now likes her. And every time we, we bring up the idea of another cat, my grandma goes, I like this cat. I don't like any other cats. <laughs> and yes, for those that are wondering, um, my grandma is also the same person who drove me to that one Taco Bell where this family was talking shit about me. Um, I'll put that video up in the corner. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he still comes around. He's a good, friendly little lad. He's like a little gentle giant. Um, Snooky's just as lovable. And, um, last year, oh, goodness. And last year, my sister and I adopted a golden retriever mix, a beautiful chocolate puppy named Bailey, and she's also she's actually my youngest daughter and she's also a sweetheart she's got like these big beautiful like light green eyes she's very gorgeous she's very pretty and she's a sweetheart um oh my goodness i'm at i'm at 29 minutes and yeah, I got off work at like 7.30, and I like went into work like at 9, so I worked like more than 9 hours today, and I'm very tired. I'm gonna go to bed now, um, but yeah, here, if I have more photos of my baby, then 
I'll put them up on the screen for y'all. I also hope that y'all enjoyed this um, speed paint of me drawing this cat that I did for an art contest. Um, thank you guys so much for staying until the end. I really do appreciate it. Um, here is that finished piece that I did for y'all. I hope you guys like it. Hope y'all enjoy. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a bit of a different one. Um, but I hope you guys like it. I'm, I am a bit happy to be, of course, recording again and making vid videos again. Um, but just know that if I take like a break in between, I promise I am thinking of the channel. Um, but my voice is probably going to kill me again. And then I'll be bedridden and fatigued. Goodness, excuse me. But I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys loved the art. If you guys would like to see more. If you guys have any video ideas as well that you think I should bring up. Please let me know in the comments below as well. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for staying until the end. I hope you guys stay hydrated. Stay safe. And of course. You know what I'm going to say? Stay tuned you guys. <laughs> But being for real though, stay hydrated, stay safe. I'm trusting you had dinner. I'm trusting you are going to bed at a reasonable time. Because I'm not. Don't follow in my footsteps. <laughs> I hope you guys stay safe, stay well. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! This speed paint that you were actually seeing in the background is a very interesting one. This was actually a submission for an art contest that I participated in about two months ago, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh, oh, we have a guest. Snooky, my cat's here. Is there anything you want to say? Hello, everyone. Say hello to Snooky, my cat. Is there anything you want to tell the world? Share your wisdom. The floor is yours. That's it? Oh, okay. Yeah, she wants to be let down. That audio is going to be messed up when I listen to it. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um. Oh, she's like, she's like standing by the door. Oh, now you're talkative now. Hold on, let me, let me open the door for her. You wanna go outside? Mm-hmm, okay, go on. Come on, little lady. You can go. Bye. Anyways, so sorry about that. <laughs> This audio is going to be fun when I listen back to it. Um, okay, where did I leave off at? Um, I was severely sick. I called out of work Friday. Um, and then my cat came in. But then I noticed in... Oh. And then I noticed in, like, this old storage space... Interesting. My dog is barking.